there was some drama last month. And oh, yeah. I yes. read about this. In short, there is a project called Rust on Linux, or Rust for Linux, I believe, whose aim is to advocate for in including the Rust programming language and the ability to write stuff in Rust in the Linux kernel, which makes sense because many of the bugs that are found in the Linux kernel are ones of memory safety and ones that theoretically could have been prevented had that bit of code been written in Rust. Now, obviously, the Linux kernel, it, it's, it's very old. It's got decades of work in it by hundreds, maybe even thousands of people, and it's written in C, how to compile on lots of things. So they're starting small. The main thing that the Rust project has come in for is for writing Linux drivers for various random bits of hardware that, because, partly because they are very, relatively limited, because you can compile Linux without including a certain bit of hardware's driver, and also because a, l a lot of the time, because that code is more niche, it gets less attention and therefore higher chances of there being bugs that are not spotted in code review. And one of the projects that heavily uses the ability to write device drivers in Rust is Asahi Linux, which is the project to port Linux to Apple M series MacBooks, which is a surprisingly big job because there are a lot of devices like uh, I.O. scheduling, GPUs, things, even things like USB controllers that Apple have made their own implementations of that they're essentially having to reverse engineer in order to have in a way that could be plugged into Linux. Because, of course, Apple do everything proprietary. Well, it does make sense in this case because they could take advantage of the much tighter vertical integration between hardware and software. True. Just so they can still not support... Uh... MST, so you still cannot have two device video outputs on one port Correct. unless it's Thunderbolt. Yes. However, the Rust for Linux project has not been without its opposition among the more old school Linux maintainers who are perhaps understandably worried about the extra burden that having two programming languages in the kernel would be, particularly because there are things like certain Linux subsystems which will remain written in C, possibly for perpetuity and that Rust code will need to interface with. Because one thing that is sort of a constant with the Linux kernel is that the fundamental rule of Linux kernel development is you are not allowed to break, God's sake, what on earth are the door they're sending me? They can't concentrate. <laughs> so they, are, they appear to be sending you skibbity toilet. Why? Could are they, you six years old? Could they not, please? I'm trying to have a serious discussion. Thank you. Yes, so... The fundamental rule of Linux kernel development is you do not break user space. That is to say, any code that has been compiled for Linux must continue working for any future version of Linux in perpetuity. And if you break that rule, as such, if you break a program if, because of the kernel, then either you fix it or you have a very angry Finnish man saying you an email filled with lots of swear words. You'll be finished. Thanks, Corey. Ha ha ha. However, ha, ha. five out of ten, Matt. IGN, I don't know, something. <laughs> <laughs> However, the Linux kernel's internal APIs, so bits of the kernel calling other bits of the kernel, those can be changed as and when they like, so that if they find a better way of doing something inside the kernel, they can just do it. Which means that when stuff like the internal C APIs change and there are Rust bindings to them, that is code that lets you call them from Rust, then those would need to be changed as well. And the worry among many of the older school maintainers is that if they do not know Rust, then they will not be able to maintain those bindings and thus they and thus they do not want to have the burden of maintaining that which i will point out is that at least initially the rest of the linux project has promised to take on the risk of the the job of fixing these up should those internal apis changed however some internal kernel maintainers were somewhat more stubborn about this and essentially denied any any rust code that touches their bit to the kernel and this sort of got to a heat with Hector Markan, uh, Hector Market, also known as Markan, who was the lead of the Asahi Linux project, resigning over, quote, uh, where's the blooming quote? I had it. There it is. Quote, I no longer have any faith left in the kernel development process or community management approach. Now, I will say for the record that the, Hector's way of working with the Linux development community has ruffled a few feathers particularly as in cases where he has felt that Linux kernel maintainers were being obstructive to his code, rightly or wrongly, in some cases rightly, he has taken to Mastodon to complain about it. 
And because he is somebody with a following, that leads to other people go going on and flaming them, which is not great. Now, initially, Mr. Linus Torvalds, the man what runs the Linux kernel, Very impressive pronunciation. Told him off for told, told him off for this sort of master number beginning. Part of the what happened here is that. A lot of the community were seemingly hoping for Linus to step in and sort of set the record straight on what the policy is on supporting Rust code in the kernel. And he did not do this for a while, which is probably why this drama happened, until he eventually stepped in. First, he said, quote, ask yourself, how many problems has Rust caused you in the past year? And followed it with, so next time you want to write an email to complain about Rust support, take a look in the mirror. Is the problem actually Rust code or is the problem between the keyboard and the chair and you just want to vent? Ooh. He does not mince his words. And then follow that up with directly to the replying to one of the maintainers who initially blocked Rust code that would interface with the subsystem that he maintains, where he said, quote, The fact is, the pull request you objected to did not touch the DMA layer at all. This was in all caps in the email. And then he followed this up by saying that, he was saying, so let me be clear. If, you're a maintain if you as a maintainer feel that you control who or what can use your code, you are wrong. You are saying that you disagree with Rust, which is fine. No one has ever required you to write or read Rust code. But then you take the stance that mean that Rust code cannot even use or interface what you maintain. Um, I'm trying to find a quote. There is, yes. The quote from Linus, which made the policy of this very clear, which is, you are not forced to take any Rust code or care about any Rust code. You can ignore it. But ignore the Rust side automatically means that you don't have any say on the Rust side. So he has set the record straight that, put another way, nobody's forced to deal with Rust does not imply everybody is allowed to veto any Rust code. So a bit of unfortunate drama there, and which has led to a, a, pretty, a very prolific Linux kernel contributor departing. But the good news is that the Asahi Linux project was not just him. There was a team behind it who will continue maintaining it and ultimately attempt and somewhat fail, but still attempt to keep pace with Apple's new hardware at adding support to it for Linux.